oh, that's their culture, you have to respect it. That's right. Yeah. That's what yeah. they say. It's, yeah. it's just insane. Yeah. It's just the one exception, liberal about everything else, but then this, this one exception, it's their culture. Well, the hell with their culture. What is the fucking point of having more Muslims in your society? Federal prosecutors bring terror charges against group arrested in New Mexico compound case. What's going on YouTube? It's your boy LP back once again with an update on the religion of peace. We haven't checked in on our favorite religion for a while. Let's see what they've been up to. Federal prosecutors on Thursday brought terrorism and other serious charges against five people arrested last year on a New Mexico compound, alleging in a new indictment that the group was gathering weapons and training in their squalid quarters to kill FBI and military personnel. The case against Janie LeVay, Siraj Ibn Wahaj, Hujra Waha, etc., etc., drew significant attention when the group was first arrested last year, in part because of the compound on which they lived, and in part because officials suggested they were Muslim extremists. Officials found 11 guns on the compound in Amalia, near the state's border with Colorado, as well as 11 children they said were neglected, and the body of Ibn Wahaj's three year old son, Abdul Ghani. The indictment does not identify any particular terrorist group affiliation, but says the group talked of engaging in jihad and dying as martyrs. The indictment says they wanted in particular to target FBI, government, or military personnel. Most terrorism suspects arrested by the FBI are charged with non-terrorism offenses, according to internal bureau data reviewed by the Washington Post, and more domestic terror suspects were arrested last year than those said to be inspired by international terror groups. A senior law enforcement official told the Post recently that it is often the violence that motivates someone more than any particular ideology. You know, it's funny because if you remember this story from back in the day, those 11 children were all being trained and brainwashed to kill and murder for Allah, but rather than remind anybody about that, I guess the Washington Post didn't feel like that was really necessary or relevant, so instead they just throw out this ending paragraph about how most arrests are for domestic terrorism, which is funny because right before that, did you catch how they said that most suspects who are arrested aren't charged with terrorism? So those are kind of contradictory statements there, WAPO, where the domestic people who were arrested, were they charged with terrorism at greater rates than the so-called internationally inspired ones? I guess we'll never know. American tourists stabbed in Amsterdam were targeted by Afghan man with a terrorist motive, officials say. Two Americans who were stabbed Friday night at a train station in Amsterdam were targeted by an Afghan citizen who had a terrorist motive. Initial reports indicated that it did not appear to be a targeted attack and that the victims did not appear to be chosen for a clear reason. The suspect, who had a residency permit from Germany, was stopped by Dutch police officers when he was shot and wounded. He is scheduled to be arraigned during a closed-door hearing with an investigative judge on Monday. Officials have not disclosed the charges he could face. Did cutting-edge DNA analysis point police to Marisha Shen's killer? Accused murderer Ibrahim Ali may have been found using same tools that cracked Golden State killer Case. The former lawyer of the man accused of killing 13-year-old Marissa Shen says investigators used a new form of crime scene DNA analysis to determine that the girl's killer was likely a man of Middle Eastern descent. The analysis is called DNA phenotyping, also known as snapshot DNA, and it has provided leads and arrests in several cold cases in the United States by helping investigators predict the appearance or even ethnicity of a suspect. Now, this can't be possible. I've watched my Vosh and hopefully Ibrahim Ali has watched his Vosh and he'll try out the race as a social construct defense in a court of law. I'm sure that'll work out well for him. 
They were able to isolate the DNA found on the young girl's body to be from people from a particular region in the world, that being part of the upper Middle East, said Danny Markovitz, the former lawyer of Ibrahim Ali, the man now charged with the first degree murder of Shen. Markovitz stopped representing Ali last month due to a language barrier. Shen's homicide sparked fear in the community that a killer was on the loose until Ali's arrest in September 2018. Ali came to Canada as a Syrian refugee in early 2017. Now, what's interesting about this case is that the police have only ever described it as a random murder. I'm sure you're all wondering, did he rape this 13-year-old girl? We've never been told anything to indicate that that's the case. We've just been told that it was a random murder, you know, a 29-year-old Syrian refugee uh, killing a 13-year-old girl randomly, just randomly, you know, as they do. Uh, so it, actually, it hasn't actually gone to trial yet, so maybe more information will come to light. But this case has been very politicized and in some very cringe-worthy ways. For example, if you look up this on the Wikipedia page, you'll see this little entry. A spokesperson for Marissa Shen's mother communicated that while she appreciates the attention given to Marissa's murder, she does not want the case to become political. Instead, they should focus on the violence against women and children in our society, especially women of color. You know, just don't get political with it. Of course, normal people don't have their own spokesperson. Uh, these are government-provided agents from the Trudeau's liberal government. We've seen this before with previous Muslim attacks. I've talked about it on this channel. When something like this happens that can create bad PR for the Muslim community, they send in people to rep you and tell you what to say or simply speak on your behalf. When Ali had his first court appearance back in March to set the trial dates, uh, there was a lot of protesting outside the court, a lot of people there showing support for the family, and a woman in a hijab threw coffee on one of the women out there. Uh, but of course, this was never reported in the media. Just imagine if it was the other way around. If a blonde white woman threw coffee on a woman in a hijab, they'd be shouting hate crime and talking about it for four weeks. In fact, we'd still be hearing about it today in all likelihood. Cologne hostage taker was slated for deportation. The Syrian suspect behind the hostage situation at Cologne Central train station was reportedly due to be deported back in 2015. German authorities have been accused of dropping the ball. The Syrian asylum seeker who's accused of staging an attack at Cologne Central train station this week could have been deported years ago according to media reports. The case bears similarities to that of Anis Amri, the Tunisian rejected asylum seeker who carried out a truck attack at a Berlin and Christmas market in 2016. The suspect identified as Mohammed AR could have been deported to the Czech Republic in 2015 since he first applied for asylum there before traveling to Germany, according to information obtained by German newspaper Kolnerstad Anzanger and Focus magazine. Under the European Union's Dublin regulation, asylum seekers must be processed at their point of entry into the bloc. Under those rules, German authorities should have sent him back. However, Germany's Federal Office of Migration and Refugee refugees missed a deadline to deport him back to the Czech Republic, according to the reports. Since he wasn't deported, the BAMF then took over his case, granting him permission to stay in Germany till at least 2021. And then he firebombed a McDonald's in Cologne's train station. A 14-year-old girl sustained serious burns while a second person was treated for smoke inhalation. The suspect then ran out of the restaurant and entered a nearby pharmacy where he took a female employee hostage. After two hours, police stormed the pharmacy and shot the suspect several times. The hostage was injured but later released from the hospital. Mohamed A.R. sustained serious injuries during the police operation and is currently still in a coma. He's been charged with attempted murder and serious bodily harm. Federal prosecutors said on Wednesday that there were enough indications to suggest that there was a radical Islamist motive behind the attack, although investigations are still ongoing.
German immigration policy under fire after gang rape of young woman in Freiburg. German police have arrested eight people, including seven Syrian refugees and a German citizen over their suspected involvement in a group sexual assault on an 18-year-old woman in the city of Freiburg. The incident took place on the night of October 14, but the police only issued a detailed report on the matter after all major suspects were detained. The victim, whose identity has not been revealed, attended a disco party at one of the local clubs where she became acquainted with a Syrian asylum seeker. He bought her a drink and the pair then left the club together. The man is alleged to have then dragged the woman into nearby bushes and raped her. The perpetrator then left his victim in the bushes and returned to the club to call his friends. The woman was subsequently raped by at least seven other men. According to police, the victim could not resist the assaults and was left completely defenseless as she was allegedly intoxicated by an unknown substance. German media reported that the drink the Syrian bought her may have contained knockout drops or some drugs. The German anti-immigrant alternative for Germany party also rushed to condemn the incident and promote some of its ideas. What else should actually happen in our country before it will be acknowledged that multiculturalism is not something that is right? All the perpetrators were known to police, but roam free and gang rape a defenseless woman, the Bavarian branch of the right-wing party tweeted. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think that anti-diversity sentiment is the real crime here. Ten-year-old girl was repeatedly raped by foreign grooming gang in Finland, prompting police to warn of foreign men contacting underage girls on social media. Now, I know grooming gang has become a sort of a PC term to describe gentlemen of a certain background, but can we just agree that it's not really the appropriate term for a pedophile rape gang? Okay, when you're gang raping ten-year-old girls, you're not a grooming gang, you're a pedophile rape gang. A Muslim pedophile rape gang. Seven men have been arrested in Finland, accused of repeatedly raping a 10-year-old girl in a grooming case that has shocked the Scandinavian country. The girl has allegedly been subjected to multiple sexual assaults over several months in the suspect's homes in Ulu in northern Finland. The men aged 20 to 40 have all arrived in Finland as migrants or refugees in recent years and are thought to have made contact with the victim on social media. Someone could offer them something nice like tobacco or alcohol, which can start a nasty chain of events. Finland's Prime Minister Juha Sipla took to Twitter to express his shock and anger, writing that a sexual offense against a child is an inhumane act and its wickedness cannot be comprehended. Ulu is a harbour city in northwest Finland, home to some 202,000 people. Of Finland's population of just over 5.5 million, some 320,000 people are born in a foreign country. Compared to neighbouring Sweden, Finland had a low intake of migrants and refugees during the recent European migrant crisis. Still managed to catch a whole pedophile rape gang though. Funny how that works. Pregnant wife of Sri Lanka bomber detonates suicide vest during raids, killing her children and three police officers. This is, of course, uh, referring to the Sri Lanka Easter attacks where many Easter worshippers were killed. I'm not going to go over that story. I'm assuming you heard about it, just like I didn't go over some of the other bigger stories of the year, like the uh, Strasbourg Christmas market shooting. The wife of the suspected mastermind behind the Easter Sunday bombings detonated the explosives as police raided the family's Colombo homes, Sri Lanka's deputy defense minister said. The mastermind of the suicide bomb plot is now believed to have been Inshaf Ibrahim in his 30s who owned a copper factory. He is said to have detonated his own explosive device at the Shangri-La Hotel by the busy breakfast buffet, a source close to the family told reporters. When the lavish and sprawling Ibrahim home was raided shortly afterwards, the pregnant wife of one of the brothers was in the home wearing a suicide vest. As police arrived, the woman reportedly detonated the vest, killing herself, her two children, and three police officers. Speaking in Townsville, Prime Minister Scott Morrison confirmed one of the attackers had spent time living in Australia. They departed in early 2013. That individual had been here on a student and graduate skilled visa.
All right, it's been almost a year since I did one of these, but we're getting into the more recent stuff now. This story from June 21st. Pittsburgh resident Syrian man arrested on terrorism charges after allegedly planning attack on Christian church appears in court. 21-year-old Pittsburgh resident and Syrian refugee accused of planning an attack on a Christian church on the city's north side and providing resources to ISIS has been arrested. Alawamer allegedly a plan to bomb the Legacy International Worship Center using a weapon of mass destruction. Alawamar caught the attention of investigators on social networks and encrypted messaging apps in April. He was allegedly expressing interest in jihad and offering to provide information on potential ISIS attack targets in Pittsburgh. The FBI said Alawamar recently bought a number of items that could be used in making a bomb. He was seen on Sunday and Monday buying six boxes of nails for possible shrapnel. <laughs> This next one posted to the Gateway Pundit on July 6th. Muslim migrant tells Swedish TV anchor he moved to Europe to fight jihad for Islamic takeover of Sweden and he lives off welfare jizya. أنا في السويد. أمم. عند تأكل من أموالهم وتشرب من. نحن ناكل نحن ناكل ناكل من أموال الله ليس من أموالهم. يعني تأخذ من الحكومة أيضا تستفيد منها وكل شيء. أي نحن ناكل من أموال الله ليس أموالهم. طيب لماذا لا تذهب إلى أرض الإسلام مثلا إلى مكة إلى مسقط رأس النبي إلى المدينة المنورة حتى تستمتع بقبر النبي وأرض الإسلام وتستمتع بـ 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 بالإسلام في أرضه لماذا ذهبت عند الكفار نحن هنا في محمدينية لننشر ديننا لكن أنت تعرف أنه حرام أنك تترك بلاد الإسلام وتعيش في بلاد الكفر دون اضطرار بلاد الإسلام هي بلاد الله بأكملها كل خريطة العالم طيب إذا أنا أسألك في هذه النصوص لما قال محمد لقد جئتكم بالذبح أنت تقول هذا الكلام أنه صحيح صحيح مئة بالمئة وأنا أمرت أن أقاتل الناس حتى يشهدوا أن لا إله إلا الله وأن محمد رسول الله هي أيضا صحيح مئة بالمئة نعم وسنقاتل Iraqi refugee is convicted in Germany of raping and murdering teenage girl. This one posted July 10th to the New York Times. German court convicted an Iraqi man on Wednesday of raping and murdering a teenage girl and sentenced him to life in prison. A year after the case fueled far-right protests across the country and prompted anger at the government handling of rejected asylum claims. Oh, you don't want migrants coming and raping and killing your children? What are you, some kind of far-right extremist? The court in Western Germany ruled that the crime committed by the Iraqi Ali Bashar 22 was especially egregious, making it less likely that he will ever be paroled. Mr. Bashar had confessed to killing the girl Susanna Feldman, 14, but had denied raping her. I'm sure just like Marissa Shen never got raped, right? <laughs> Muslim man who killed Jewish neighbor while screaming Allahu Akbar, not criminally responsible because he smoked marijuana beforehand, judge rules can happen. This one posted July 16th to Summit News by your boy Paul Joseph Watson. And this is a real story. Don't, uh, don't come at me complaining about the source, all right? I, I looked into it. You know I did. French judges ruled that a Muslim man that who shouted Allahu Akbar while murdering a Jewish woman in an anti-Semitic attack should not be held criminally responsible because he had smoked marijuana before the attack. Now, I will say, just to play devil's advocate, we don't know the details here. It's possible that the Jewish person said they would match, but then just threw in a point two and then hogged the blunt the whole time. You know what I mean? We don't know.
Muslim jihadis gang rape, torture, murder 60-year-old Christian virgin. Some of her former students and neighbors were among the perpetrators. Islamic jihadis recently gang raped a 60-year-old Christian woman to triumphant cries of Allahu Akbar before stoning her to death. The men responsible for this heinous act are believed to be members of the al-Qaeda-linked jihadi group al-Nusra, elements of which the Obama administration referred to and supported as freedom fighters. Of Armenian descent, Susan was likely a descendant of those displaced Armenians, ironically the lucky ones that survived the Islamic Turkic genocide that claimed 1.5 million of their numbers who ended up in northern Syria. Islamic TV channel that called gay people insane and worse than animals breached Ofcom regulations. Peace TV. <laughs> Peace TV, which airs on Sky, also said magicians should be killed and underage girls being married off was no problem. That last one, a little bit less funny. An Islamic TV station which has aired programs calling homosexuality insane and gay people worse than animals could be stripped of its UK broadcasting license. Peace TV, which is available as a digital channel on Sky, also called for magicians to be killed and said underage girls being married off was no problem at all. Presenter Imam Kasim Khan told viewers, men marrying men, being on television in front of our children, kissing each other in the mouth, walking down the street, hugging and kissing, this society has gone insane. He added, even an animal that is defiled by Islam, the pig, as nasty and corrupted and contaminated as a pig is you never see two male pigs that are trying to have sex together that's insanity these are animals human beings are supposed to be dignified they're thinking beings Somali-born journalist returned to her homeland to document how safe the country is but terrorists killed her Five boys as young as 12 filmed themselves gang raping a mentally disabled woman, 18, in Park in Germany. And you got this nice little watch the video down here. I think I'll pass. But this is an interesting one because based off the headline, you might assume that they were Muslims, especially when you hear that they're migrants. But it turns out that these were Bulgarian nationals. Now, of course, if you look at the picture here in the sun, you can see see clearly they have darker skin but everywhere this was only reported as them being Bulgarian nationals and of course them being underage their identities are not published uh, and good pictures of them are not published anywhere however somebody on Twitter sent me a link to a German website has.de and I popped it into Google Translate because he said according to this website it was reported that they were Turkish minorities from Bulgaria and that is is in fact what this website says. Suspicious teenagers are Turkish speaking Bulgarians. Shortly after a patrol car crew stopped a group of five children and teenagers, some of which fit the description, with almost certain probability, said the police spokesman, the five were involved in the act. All had testified to the charge of serious sexual offenses. It only needs to be clarified which person had which share of the crime. The two 12 year olds and the three 14 year olds are, according to police, Turkish speaking Bulgarians. The older suspect spent the night in Saturday alone in a police cell. It's very unusual, especially when it comes to teenagers, said the police spokesman. Now, there is a Turkish minority in Bulgaria. About 8.8% of the population of Bulgaria is Turkish. But as I said, it's very similar to, you know, the people who attacked those lesbians on the bus in the UK. The fact that they're underage and the way that it's talked about, the way that it's reported, seemingly almost intentionally done to make you think that they're white. In fact, if you look it up on Twitter, you 
you can see people like this guy here using it to argue with somebody whose account has apparently been deleted probably because they were talking about migrant rape we can see this person says non-immigrants do the same but it doesn't make good news and then responds to something with eight bulgarians gang rape a girl all white now it turns out this is actually a different story this is eight teenage boys 14 to 16 who gang raped a 13 year old girl in germany these boys also filmed the crime of the gang rape of the underage teenage girl but if you do a little digging if you search into it you can find an article like this one here girl 13 uses facebook to find teenage gang rapists who drug dragged her into forest and scrolling down sure enough we find the answer she was ambushed by eight migrant boys all belonging to the turkish minority in eastern bulgaria while walking home along a forest path so remember, if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck, and it quacks like a duck, you gotta be skeptical when that media comes out here wording things in vague ways, trying to make you think you're not looking at a duck. That boy needs therapy. Branding a zoo, let's have a cheese. How would I count three? That, 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 that boy needs therapy. <laughs>